Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's good to be with you. My name is Rodney, and uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us via our recorded service, praying with us whenever it is uh, that it fits into your life. We're glad that you're making the time and the choice to do this. Thank you for responding to God's invitation to come together to be body here on earth in this Pentecost season that we continue to walk in. We're in the 16th week, four months of of living in this power of Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, empowers us and lives in us. And so we come together to celebrate that, and uh, it's good to be with you. Wanted to invite Ken Humple just to, uh, to share uh, some news with us, a, kind of an exciting uh, event that happened here locally. I'm going to stand close to you. Oh, okay. Wow. Look at him using a handheld microphone and everything. I just want to inform everybody that uh, Jones County now has a Freedom Rock. I don't know if you've seen it in the paper. It's out in Stone City, and it is awesome. You got to get out there and see it. It's actually on the opposite end of Stone City from uh, the general store. It's 12 foot high, and I don't know, but the fella did a really good job of painting it. So Tell us more about the Freedom Rock, Ken. What is it? Uh, the Ray Bubba Sorensen paints the Freedom Rock in each county in Iowa. Jones County is the 98th one that he's done. The only county left is Lynn County, and now he's starting to do them in a, each state. But we have something like nine veterans depicted on one side of the rock. One of them's from the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, the First World War, Second World War, Korean, Vietnam, uh, freedom, and present. Craig Amundsen, he was a uh, well, my daughter actually went to school with him. He was killed in the Pentagon in 9-11. His picture's on there. But if you get a chance, you got to get out there and see it because it's really awesome. And then it has Grant Wood on one side and Dylan's Furl. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Years ago, a guy took a one-bottom plow and laid out Highway 1 all the way up to Dubuque. So it's depicted on there. But if you get a chance... Get out to see it. Thank you. So this is a, a rock that honors all those who have participated in different kinds of freedom and creative response to that freedom, it sounds like. So, um, you know, I, it's always interesting, Ken, you know, like when I was hearing you name, it's those kinds of things. It's not to glorify war. Somehow, you know, we find ourselves marking our lives by war. And really, um, it's a tragedy that we're acknowledging wars, that many, in one century even. Um, And yet, it's about acknowledging the freedom that we experience today because of the sacrifices made by our ancestors. So, thank you for sharing that, Ken. You know, we we do gather in a, a kind of freedom that we enjoy in our country physically, but also a freedom that comes to us from Christ, uh, a freedom that comes through our baptism as we hear those words, you are forgiven and you are loved, and that's, that's what we live in. Uh, next Wednesday, I want to just remind you that we're going to have our service on Wednesday night outside on the east side of the education building, and um, we will end that and invite people to come into the education building for an open house as we prepare for WD4 this fall. So uh, there's some changes in the education building. Uh, Classrooms are changed. Bulletin boards are bright and colorful. And uh, so come over and uh, join us in that celebration and the energy of our young people. Uh, We appreciate the way that you support all of our ministry here at St. Paul. And this Sunday, again, just to remind you, and you'll see this in the Pulse, we're going to be receiving uh, new members 
here at St. Paul, which is extremely exciting that we have people who want to come and be a part of our life here in this faith community. And then we're also going to install some of our new leaders who were elected this summer to our council. So if you're able to come and join us this Sunday, you want to come and worship and sing some more and have that energy of the park, uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. I already I got it phoned in and uh, we're going to be at Wapsiana Park at 1030. So come and join us. Let's take a deep breath and just allow ourselves to be in this space right now. We drink in the love of our God. I invite you to rise as you are able. And let us continue our prayer tonight, making the sign of the cross, the sign of our baptisms, as we say, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. We gather as a people who are often wounded. Our lives are filled with temptation uh, with doubt. Sometimes we act selfishly. We're called to love, but we fall short of that love. And it's not who we desire to be. It's not who God desires us to be. So God has given us this great invitation to acknowledge, to confess our sin, that we might be filled with grace, forgiven, and made whole. So let's think about our lives for a minute. Lift up in our minds and hearts, those places in our lives where sin and brokenness has emerged. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart as we say together. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. My friends in Christ, we acknowledge that we all have sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God, and it is by the gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ that we are made righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sin. Amen. As Pastor Rodney just said, it's the gift of grace that we receive forgiveness. It's that amazing grace, a gift that we did not earn or deserve, but are given freely. Truth and 
justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my and to praise our Lord, our God, for all of the things that he has done for us, that he laid down his life for us in our place. And as we read the scripture tonight and hear that in just a little bit, we'll hear Jesus asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? And I want you to reflect tonight. Who do you say that God is to you? We hear so many different references, our King, our friend, our Savior, our Messiah. As we think of ourselves personally and our relationship with our God, who is God to you? This next song is a song and as Moses was saying, as he's getting ready to go see the Israelites, and he says, who sent me? And he says, tell them, I am. Is God our great I am? Be 
beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am. The mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or in The great I am. Help us to live lives with that knowledge in our hearts that you are the great I am, that our lives would reflect that we have a God who is almighty. We have a God who loves us, who forgives us, who calls us by name, who has given us blessing after blessing after blessing. Help us to be a people who will show that love to others in everything that we say and do, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, that we would be a testimony to your power, to your majesty, to the great I am. Please pray with me together these words. Oh God, oh God through, through suffering, suffering and, and rejection, rejection you bring, you bring forth, forth our, our salvation, salvation, and by the, the glory, glory of, of the cross, you transform, transform our lives. Grant, Grant that, that for the sake of the gospel, we, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as our reader comes forward to share God's word with us today. The first reading tonight is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like the one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Word of God, word of life. Amen. We'll read together Psalm 116, verses 1 through 9. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. 
The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from the letter from James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Barb. The Lord be with you. I invite you to rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, Jesus asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. What about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the anointed. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at the disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. Do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples, and he said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. 
And whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with all the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The thing that caught my attention this week it's kind of surprised me because I thought I had kind of grown numb to it. But it was actually a conversation yesterday and this morning with three different groups of people all talking about their experience of the conversation around the Delta variant of COVID again. And the conversations all had a common theme in them. And it revolved around the experience right now that people are feeling incredibly confused and worn out by the many voices that are being showered upon us, that are being impaled upon us every day in our media, in our social platforms, in our newspapers, in our magazines. Who can we trust? Which voice am I supposed to listen to? The federal government? The FDA? Or is it the scientists and the, the CDC? Or is it the local government? The local governors? Is it, is it the city government? It, who is it that has the credible voice? Am I supposed to be thinking I'm going to get a booster shot soon? Or is that just reserved for certain people? Or we don't need it? Or are we going to really get ahead of this? Should I mask? Shouldn't I mask? Some of it's not new. But what surprised me is the number of people that I hear are saying they're worn out by not knowing who to trust. And that's incredibly disconcerting to be waking up every day doubting confused not not sure what the safe and healthy path forward is am i protected if i'm vaccinated or am i not what additional am i supposed to be doing this exhaustion that's coming from being doubt-filled and confused is wearing people out and is starting to show up. People being testy, people being grumpy, people acting abnormally, if you will, short-tempered, making decisions that are kind of selfish and maybe not thinking about the community. It shows up on the streets all the time, right? But to hear people vocalizing it got me thinking about this gospel passage. The voices that come around us, the voices that lead us into confusion that aren't clear for us, the voices that seem one day to have authority and then the next day to be challenged by an equal and other authority leaves us in a vacuum. That's what I think was happening in this group of disciples that's with Jesus in this story that we hear today. Who do you say that I am? Jesus says to them, sincerely wanting to know, having been traveling with them now for a couple of years, teaching them, showing them God's power and great works. And he leaves behind their homeland, back in the Galilee, takes them up into a Roman city, surrounded by other voices, other commerce, other religions. And he says to them, who do you say that I am? 
And they're throwing out all of the right answers, right? Trying, trying to be the right ones. A prophet or Elijah. You're John the Baptist. You're here to usher in the kingdom of God. That's what other people are saying. Yeah, but I don't really hear conviction in what you're saying. Do you really know who I am? Do you believe yet who I am? And Peter, the rock, right, speaks up. You're the Messiah. You're the anointed one. And Jesus tells them what we would absolutely expect him to say. Don't tell anybody. Well, Peter, are you right or aren't you right? Are you affirmed? Is, is this, you know, in another version of this story, Matthew has Jesus saying to Peter, you've said this under the influence of God, not your own mind, which would make perfect sense in this story if we look at what happens next. Right? Here's Peter speaking the words of truth inspired by God's truth, inspired by the mind and the voice of God. And they leave Philippi and they head back down the roads and they're pointing their faces now to Jerusalem. They're far enough into the mission and ministry now that Jesus says to them, we're going to Jerusalem. And you know what happens to Jerusalem prophets, right? You know what happens to people who get labeled Messiah when you go to Jerusalem. Don't tell anybody. They kill their prophets. They drive out Messiahs. They disavow and dishonor those who would work in the power of God. And Jesus is teaching them. And he says, look, we're going to Jerusalem. And here's what's going to happen when we get there. I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be killed in order to be raised up on the third day. And here we have Peter who has just spoken with the authority of God's mind. You are the Messiah. He takes Jesus aside. He says, Wait, Jesus, that's not what the Messiah is supposed to do. The Messiah is supposed to free us. The Messiah is supposed to raise up an army and get rid of the Romans and give us back our sovereignty. Jesus, you're not supposed to go to Jerusalem and be killed by our own leadership. And here's the line in here that I think gets skipped right over, but is absolutely critical. Jesus listens to Peter, and then he turns and looks at the faces of his disciples, and he sees in their eyes their confusion, their doubt, their weariness, because they wanted to believe that they were with the one who was Messiah, and now the same voice that proclaimed him Messiah is challenging him is saying no Jesus you don't know what you're talking about and confusion takes over the disciples and Jesus says to Peter you have become a stumbling block to me satan before it was a personal pronoun satan meant a stumbling block something that caused confusion and chaos an energy that led to disarray. And Jesus points to Peter and says, you are no longer thinking with the mind of God. You are now thinking with your mind, with the human mind, with human concerns. Get behind me. I will not stumble over you. And I don't want these disciples of mine to stumble over you either. Rock Get behind me. These voices of confusion, unintended as they are, rooted in human concerns, is exactly what James is picking up on in the early Christian community as well. When he talks about the tongue, 
the exercise of words in the Christian community. Saying to those in his community in 49 or 50 A.D., just a a few years after the Jesus experience as the Christian community is trying to live in love and unity around this one table, we have people speaking deceitfully to each other. Promising, oh yeah, I follow Jesus Christ, I'm baptized, and not lifting a finger to help someone who's vulnerable, not serving anyone else in their community, resting on the the knowledge that they're saved. And James says to them, you say one thing and your actions show another. You can't say you love your neighbor and then watch them suffer. Salt water and fresh water cannot come from the same place. Praise and curse cannot come from the same mouth. It seems obvious, doesn't it? And those images that James lifts up to get his people thinking about the effects of their words, guarding what you say. This is not a new idea for us, right? But guarding what we say, we can't control the whole world, but we can control the environment and the community that we are a part of. And James saying, remember, think about those forest fires in the West. How did they start? One spark. Thousands of acres. You want an image for how one word, how one deceitful, hateful, judgmental word can affect the community? Look at the forest fires. Be very careful about what comes from your lips and your tongue. This caution that James lifts up for us in the Christian community. This caution that puts us right back there with Peter. When we are tempted to say things to people that are selfish, that come out of our own insecurities, that come out of our own desires for power or fame or status, that's us thinking small with our small minds. And James, like Jesus, is saying, you must put on the mind of God if you are going to be my disciples. That is the gospel, after all, when Jesus says, you you can't be ashamed of me in the gospel. Blessed are those who give their lives away to honor me. And the gospel, the good news, the good news that Jesus lived in his person, that you and I study and talk about so that we might be more like him, compassionate and generous, going to the vulnerable, lifting up those who are bowed down, being merciful. That's who we are called to be. And our tongues betray us when we speak outside of that love. Now Jesus, remember, didn't condemn Peter. He didn't kick him out. He didn't send him to hell. He didn't tell him to go join another group. What he said is, Peter, get the heck behind me and start following again so that you might figure this out. And let your tongue be true again, Peter, and let your heart be true so that what you speak is the truth that God has placed in your heart. And so we, we might ask, you know, how do, we, how do we figure out this truth of God? How do we put on the mind of God when we're surrounded by so many people Claiming to be speaking the truth. It can really only happen if we pay attention to this theme we've been called to throughout the summer. To quiet ourselves and to spend time with the word. 
to quiet ourselves and to spend time with other people who are asking the same questions and answering the question, who is God? Listening to other people and listening to our hearts that dwell on the word, speaking to us about what love looks like. See, that's the difference. That's our mantra as Christians. If, is what I'm saying, is what I'm doing loving? Is it healing? Is it lifting somebody up? Is it uniting people? Is it forgiving? Is it reconciling? If yes, then say it and do it. And if not, what's that old saying? If you don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all. It's a great mantra for us to practice because it reflects this truth. This truth that James is lifting up for us, the truth that Jesus is calling us to. What is the loving thought? What is the loving action? What are the loving words that our tongue is invited to share? That will overcome that influence of evil or hell that will help us to whittle our way through the many voices to find the voice of God, the truth of God. I invite you to please stand as you are able, as we lift our voices with Jesus, only Jesus.
We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed we say together. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Take a moment to call to mind and heart those people and situations in your own lives that you would like to join to the prayers of the church at this time. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church that we can be a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes and hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests, curb overflowing waters, and help the people who have been in the wake of those disasters to respond and recover in a good way. Lord, in your mercy, Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Be with our doctors and nurses and health care givers who have grown so weary in the face of this new resurgence. Give us wisdom and your mind that we might live in a way that will bring us all safety and greater freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Forming God, you gather this community together. Shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and worship, in our individual daily prayer, that we would honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Give us your mind and your heart, Lord, in your mercy. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace, especially those members of our families that we call to mind at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Take a moment to share with those around you a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord be with you. That was completely unnecessary. That's not where we are. (laughs) What I wanted to say instead was that when we gather, we take time to remember all the abundance that God places in our lives. And we offer some of that back to God, our time, our treasure, our talent. And we do so as a way of worshiping our God, asking God to bless it, that it might bless the community around us. And so at this time, we say thank you, God, as we pray together our offering prayer. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you so dearly love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. When your children sinned and wandered far from your friendship, you reunited them with yourself through the blood of your Son and the power of Holy Spirit. You gathered them into your church to be one as you, Father, are one with your Son and Holy Spirit. Like them, you now call us to be your people, to praise your wisdom in all your works. You make us the body of Christ, and the dwelling place of Holy Spirit. And so now with the saints and all the angels, we praise you forever as we sing. Now in the power of Holy Spirit, we recall with great thanksgiving the memorial Christ left for us as we sing, Remember Now, My Children. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the risen Christ invites us to this table where many become one. He offers us his heart, his mind to guide our lives. Come eat the bread of life, drink the cup of salvation and be united in love. I invite you to rise. In thanksgiving, let us pray together. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love 
In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. We send you out to go out and to follow. Jesus' examples, we say together, through the power power of the Holy Holy Spirit, we go go into the world to creatively connect, connect, intentionally grow, and and joyfully serve. serve. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. And all God's people said, amen. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Are they supposed to bring chairs with them, or are we going to have chairs out there for them? Uh, Bring bad chairs would be great. And if you forget... We'll have chairs for people that forget. So bring your bag chairs if you have them. Otherwise, we'll have chairs for you. Have a great week.